The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 12th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, can't call in, you can always send me an email. I'll send that off early, please. Send it to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Mostly a sea of red out there. The mostly is coming from the transports, which are up 19 points. Otherwise, all the U.S. indices trade is downside. But we may have a bottom in for the uh, day. So you've got the Dow down 14, the S&P is off four, the Nasdaq's down 29, the Russell's off two, semis are off two points as well. So why does Stevie say we might have a bottom for the day? Now we haven't had this all week long, folks. And when I say all week long, what I'm going to refer to is consistency within a chart time frame. Uh, and that's our time frame that we're looking at right now are the 30-minute time frames. These are for the four equity future contracts. Upper left is the ES Mini, representing the S&P. Upper right, NASDAQ, NQ, representing the NDX 100. you got the Dow, lower left, and Russell in the lower right. You'll see that each of them have formed bar number nine of a TD nine-count pattern out there. Uh, the NQ is already co uh, complete. It has a completed pattern because it's formed the bar following bar number nine. So the bottom is in unless you get a close below the low of the day inside the NQ. And the NQ is driving the boat here. So it's really only one one equity future contract that you have to focus on and keep an eye on. So the price point to watch today to the downside, if you get a close below 13, 398.50, that says we're heading lower. Now you can say heading lower to where? Well, we've got to go take a look at other charts to figure that out. But right now what price should do at a minimum is get up to that oscillator and change on. That's currently printed at 13,448. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, and then this morning's newsletter, as I wrote to uh, uh, subscribers out there, that our anticipation was that if markets were going to move lower, the ES Mini was going to target 4136. And lo and behold, it's done just that, and it's given us a gift. That gift is that TD9 count bottom. So assuming that we don't take out the lows of the last half hour, which we've got 21 minutes, it's possible, the low that you're watching there is a 41.33.25. If we get a close below that, that says we had lower. Now that had lower could just be back to the swing point from back here at um, 10.30 in the morning on May the 11th, that price point being 41.21. And back to the NQ, really what I'd be watching is this hammer candle. If price were to close below that TD9 count, so the level there would be 13.361. You get below that, and then you're likely back to the lows from back on the uh, 10th of May out here. But right now we should expect and anticipate the markets move higher. We should expect each of these 30 minute equity future contracts to at least go target those oscillator and change line. What it does at that stage, well, I don't know because that right now is resistance. We can see that they've also changed color. And when you have an oscillator and change line, which by the way is the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average um, of a price out here. If we take a look at the uh, if we take a look at the uh, at the oscillator and change line, when it changes color, especially after a completed pattern, it even increases 
the probability of price moving up to that line. I heard, just, heard, uh, just caught the last part of the show being replayed, uh, Tommy, and he was talking. Great, great explanation about probability out there and so forth. This, this, this is a high probability here. It doesn't mean, it doesn't guarantee it's going to work. It's just your best re reward risk. And you have decent distance between where price is at and the oscillator and change line level. You're at 41.39, you got 41.50 or so out there, so you're looking at 12 points, 50 bucks, 600, you know. Um, in any event, uh, so you've got the bottom signals out here for all four of the equity future contracts. I've been waiting for these guys to agree with each other. Now, if they agree with each other to the downside and these bottoms don't hold, that's also saying something to both you and I. So we can go back and um, let's uh, take a, a quick peek here at uh, Well, let's do this. Let's stay here. Um, so if we're really going to see that rally, one of the things you and I should see is a 30-minute positive market breath. So let's go take a look at that. I have no idea what it looks like, but we're going to find out here in a moment. And now what we've got, this is the S&P, ES Mini. You have 140 above, 142 below. So we're really close here. This is kissing cousins uh, as we uh, speak. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ out there. In, uh, in NASDAQ 100, we have 28 above, 30 below. In the red line, forget about the line. I'm looking in the upper left-hand corner. The statistics are actually more accurate, I'm finding, than the actual lines that are drawn out there. So we're really close here to possibly getting a negative crossover. Let's look at the other four time frames, see, we, see if there's any assistance being thrown out here. Now, in the ES Mini this morning, there was none. Let's take a look at it right now. The S&P, if I had, there's still none. So the choppy, 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 choppy markets out here. So market breadth is uh, definitely bearish. On the uh, S&P, it's 124 above, 194 below for the 60-minute time frame. The four-hour time frame, you've got 114 above, 184 below. On the daily time frame, we're at 95 above, 180 below. Wow. So the expectation then would be price rallies up that oscillator and change line and then gives it up, assuming that we have that negative market breadth out there, or maybe we don't even get it. We ought to get it. We got to get it. We get at least a rally up to the oscillator and change line. Okay, so we know market breadth isn't really helpful right now for any kind of rally, whether it's the 30-minute time frame or the six. Well, we didn't look. Do we look at the NASDAQ? No, we didn't look at the NASDAQ. Stevie brought that over here. I think we just had the S&P. Let's go take a look at the NASDAQ 100. So let's put up its uh, market breadth statistics. So here, here's, here's where the NQ is the one that is truly driving the boat. Okay, this is this look, this we don't have to worry. This is not taking a look at the top weighted instruments. This is looking at all instruments inside the NASDAQ 104, 105, something like that. Bullish for the 60, bullish for the 240, bullish for the daily, bullish for the weekly out there. So, yeah, the NQ, which has a completed TD9 count bottom, ought to lift all boats. So, at least get a little intraday rally out here. And we really would have to check on market breadth as price approaches those oscillator and change line levels out there. So, I know you were asking, Roger, intraday, I believe, was one of your questions. You've got the intraday signals right here. I can't get really any better than this. Whether the patterns work or not, that's a different story. But this is the setup. Uh, I can go di take apart all of the other charts out there, the ES Mini, the NQ. And we're not going to get anything better than what it is we're taking a look at from an intraday standpoint right on time with regard to the uh, Trader's Edge show. Now, the only question is, where's price head? If these TD9 count patterns don't hold, I'd go with the 4124 level for the ES Mini. That's the 60-minute uh, uh, TD9 count breakout level, which has been tested a couple of times out there. So if that doesn't hold, it's trouble in River City. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back. We're taking a look at Enphase Energy, the New York Stock Exchange, Vince Kleinosser, Nike, JD, and Wheat. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, you got the uh, Dow's down uh, 79, S&P's off 11, NASDAQ 155, Russell's down 5. We're taking a look at the charts here for N-Phase Energy, NPH is the ticker symbol. This came in yesterday uh, towards the uh, close of the uh, show out there. This is for Sat P. So, Sat, uh, this formed a, a TD9 count bottom. We can see that that TD9 count bottom uh, confirmed on uh, May the 3rd. It was the prior day that made the uh, low of the pattern. Price is back inside its profile, and it's now above that red oscillator and change line. Price should make its way up to the 17501 level. Will it be able to clear that? And that's a great question. You know, on a weekly time frame set, what you have is actually a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And it's a doozy. And the retracement here, this B to C retracement, you know, by my eyes, that's close to a 0.382 retracement. What that typically means, we can see the price is on the left-hand side of the C to D, so I've maintained the exact same angle from A to B. And I just simply have moved uh, or, or copied that exact same line and angle over. And we can see price on the left side. That's the strong side. It says that that's, that's an indication that this would do more than a one-to-one -one to the downside, A to B equals C D. Uh, that would be the first level. The fact that it was a 0.382 retracement, would be the uh, second uh, reason for that. But what that gets you down to is it gets you down into the 75-ish uh, area. Well, when I take a look at the monthly time frame chart here, what's open is 46.61. We're below profile support, and that's the breakout area. So what I would say at this stage here, the look, is that uh, we've got just a counter trend move, probably working off a little bit of an oversold condition out there. 17501 is the key resistance level. Now, if price get above that, then it likely tests at least the uh, gap to the downside, the high of April 26, and that's at 183.31. But the weeklies are confirmed. For example, the B point here had volume of 22 million when it was passed. Uh, two weeks ago, that was uh, whoops, that was 50 some uh, 50 million shares out there. So you've got that confirmed. A to B equals CD to the downside. So Sat P, I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Well, switch panels here because Peter wants to take a look at advanced decline oscillator reading inside the New York Stock Exchange. So let's put that chart up on our screen here, and we'll take a look at the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. What we had here, if you take a look, so first the reading is below zero. So we're looking at panel number three. Uh, that's the advanced decline line up top. Uh, that was a, a real do 
doozer when I finally put that one back up on the screen. That topped back here on November uh, 9th, it looks like, of 2021, and we've been moving lower ever since that. But, uh, you know, we've done the same thing here for the most part for the New York Stock Exchange as well. Um, there's no divergence pattern that we have right here at the bottom. You see I have got some green lines drawn. For example, the most recent one, we were making lower highs in the advanced client oscillator while the New York Stock Exchange was making higher highs in price. That's, oh, that's a divergence that usually resolves itself. Now, these divergences that resolve themselves, the bottom panel that I have out here, Peter, is the uh, spot volatilities with the 50-day exponential moving average and, and my, my Bollinger Band readings that I use out there, the 50 to 1 is the settings I use on that. But what we can see here is New York Stock Exchange doesn't really get running to the downside, Peter, until that spot volatilities is above the 50-day exponential moving average. Here's, here's an example of that. It's really the most recent, the most recent one, and that's uh, we we did get some movement back out here. But boy, as soon as that 50-day, as soon as price crossed that 50-day, you know, it was a big move to the downside, which also set up a divergence um, uh, type of uh, did it and that didn't. I should get rid of that line. It did at the time, but it's not there right now. Um, so the advanced client oscillator tells us right now when it's below zero. And when it's below zero, I'm talking about for a couple, two sessions out here, it's telling us that sellers are the ones that are in control of the uh, general market out there. So, Peter, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a fantastic weekend out here. Let's go to Dan's question about Nike. And we pull up the uh, charts here for Nike. Holy shnikes, uh, you're in bar number seven of a TD9 count. So perhaps by uh, between Monday and Wednesday of next week, you may get a TD9 count bottom pattern here. Now, to me, this is not enough of a retracement for us to put in an A to B equals CD to the downside, although the swing point, that B point, which we could use for a potential A to B equals CD, the 6 million shares. And yesterday, you closed below that level with 5.9 million shares. So far today, in nearly two hours of trading, you're 2.3. So it's got similar type volume. But where price might be really headed to, Dan, is that TD9 count breakout level, 115.7. You don't see the chart? Sorry about that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Thank you, Dan. I was doing so smooth. I thought I was going to get away without being in the penalty box. But nope, they just threw me into that penalty box. We take a look at Nike now here. Let's do a redo. So the first thing to notice here, Dan, bar number seven is going to form today. Where's the next area of support? On a daily basis, because we're below support. For me, that's the TD9 count breakout level. That's at 115.77. We can see that was tested back here on this big day of January 24th. It was also tested back here on March the 13th and then tested, rejected, and off to the races on March the 15th. So that's a real key level of support to be watching and observing. I suspect that that's where price is headed towards. The other area where it's headed towards is 116.50. And 116.50 is the center of its bullish structured weekly profile. And with price below the uh, uh, the green oscillator and change line, um, that, that's a pretty good indication. It's, it's lost its momentum to the upside. And now it looks like it wants to get back to that area of support, which is really tying out to the daily time frame that we see out here with that breakout area of support. And the monthly supports a further pullback, but it will really support a further pullback if it can close below the center of its bearish structure profile. And that level is 120.04. We're basically trading at about that area right now. So I, it looks like it's headed lower. you got some decent volume so far today. And uh, that one, the, that's that weekly, that's that monthly profile. That's the last bastion of potential support. Now, the real confirmation, I can see this. If price heads lower today, how are we going to know? Well, we'll know because price just heads lower. Really, what I meant was not just heads lower, but has an intent of continuing to move lower. And the reason that we'll know is because you've got a TD9 count bottom that is in place out here. So that completed at 11 o'clock. Uh, right now, and if price closes below the low of the pattern, and Dan, the low of the pattern, let me just move this over so I can grab that, is a 119.76. So if we get a close below 119.76 today, that's just going to confirm that thought process that price wants to go target that 115.77 area out there. Any chance that we don't continue to head lower next week? Well, this is bar number, this is day number four is what I should say, of consecutive moves lower out here. Um, I do see one in, instance of a six move lower, but the last time we had four bars lower was back here on the trading day of December 19th, and the price took off to the upside. But I don't know what kind of pattern, if any pattern, was out there at that stage. So, you, you know, we're, we're nearing a potential bottom out here. Maybe it gets a little rocky, we get a little bit of a rally 
on Monday, maybe Monday, Tuesday, and then it resumes lower. Uh, but what I'd be watching for is that TD9 count pattern. So, Dano, I hope that helps you out. As always, thanks so much for being so kind to provide me with some requests out there. Always makes this show go so smooth as we slide into our next request, which is J.D., and this is for Alton, and so let's read uh, Alton's question. It goes like this. Good morning, Steve. If you have time, we're going to make it. Can you please look at J.D. key levels of support and resistance? Thanks, as always. Have a great weekend. So your key level of support is between 3402 and 3451. That's the bullish structured area of your daily profile. Your key levels of resistance are 3695. That's coming from the daily time frame. But Alton, I've got more. We just have to wait until we come back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the charts here for JD for Alton. And so Alton has uh, got a nice roads momentum indicator bottom, bullish structured profile. Yesterday's move was a false breakout. Uh, it was did close above the top of his profile, where we're back below it today. So you got basically a good old fashioned consolidation with inside that zone of 3402 to 3695 out there. The weekly chart price is pulled back into a swing point. No bottom pattern. In fact, you've got a, a failed TD nine count bottom pattern out here. But price is back inside the swing point from October 28th. That was in uh, 2022 out there with much lighter volume. That had 91 million shares uh, last week, as an example. You did 41. This week, though, you're already at 65,000. But it is still with uh, light volume out there. And on the uh, on another area of resistance is 38.15. That's coming from the weekly time frame. And then on the monthly, no support levels. Because well, the next support level on the monthly for you would be down at 2577 and resistance at 4667. So that's what we see. We take a look at the charts there for JD. Let's go out to our first caller. It is John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, thanks for taking the call. And Steve, I'd like to ask you uh, to help me investigate further the NDX and the futures NQM3. Okay. And I ask you to do so by showing us that eight panel chart uh, graphic that you do every day that shows the top eight market capitalization uh, stocks in the NDX that shows both the TD9 counts and the TAS market profiles on those daily charts. I'd like to ask you to show those and uh, see if and ask you the question after looking at those, is there any general message you're getting from those? Okay, excellent question. So we're letting these uh, charts here populate at the uh, moment. And uh, so on one screen, uh, I've got uh, the, uh, the, the first eight, the top eight. Uh, I don't think they'll be completely in order. And then I've got the uh, second eight. So uh, this is just taking a moment here to populate and we'll be able to answer John's question. So here you can see that we're going to take a look at NVIDIA, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Broadcom, Apple, Microsoft, and uh, Tesla. So when we take a look at the chart for Apple. Apple has a uh, Rose Mintum indicator uh, top that has uh, already been confirmed. And it was confirmed with this little bear sash candle. Let me get the uh, trading day for you. That was on the trading day of uh, May the 9th. So what that set up is, uh, but price, so Apple's chart, John, it does have a top, but it's a neutral signal. And the reason it's neutral is because price continues to trade above the top of that profile. And that's 170.92. Microsoft, if it uh, finished the candle where it is right now today, that would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Yesterday was a doji, so it's very easy to create a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, here, price is trading what appears to be with inside the profile. So the key level to be watched on Microsoft, uh, John, is going to be 302.42. That's a bearish structured profile. And if Amazon closed below it, it would go target 292.28. In the case of Amazon, today right now you've got what looks like a bearish sash candle. I don't know whether that's going to um, be the candle at day's end. But what I do see out here is that would then complete an A to B equals CD pattern. It looks like what I'm just going to make sure by moving that. Uh, yeah. So it's close enough where a bearish reversal candle today in, in Amazon would generate a sell the D point pattern. However, Price remains above the top of its daily profile and above its green oscillator and change line. And therefore, that is a neutral signal. So we're neutral on Microsoft, on Apple. We're neutral on Amazon, even though it looks like they uh, will have topping patterns. Nothing on NVIDIA. And NVIDIA has lost its momentum because it's below the green oscillator and change line, but it's still above its uh, profile level. So there's nothing bearish with regard to NVIDIA. Google, nothing bearish at all. In fact, my recollection has got a nice A to B equals C to the upside. It confirmed one on the weekly chart. So that should continue to move higher. In the case of Tesla, Tesla is trading above the top of its profile and its oscillator and change line. Odds favor that this wants to move higher. We take a look at Facebook. Facebook did form a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price been consolidating basically with inside its profile levels. That ranges, John, from anywhere from 233.58 to 244.92. And lastly, on Broadcom, let me have to expand this chart out, see if I can figure anything out here. And I really can't. Uh, what I see is a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that has basically led to a, a sideways consolidation that's been going on for the most part ever since it gapped up on March 3rd. So that's the review of those eight instruments. What, uh, what, what do you take away from any of that? 
Uh, Steve, let me share this. I, um, I I try to stand by a policy of not um, saying too much too often and uh, uh, try to emphasize doing so when I see the potential for something significant brewing, you know, mm-hmm. and not just in stocks or stock indices, but any market. Sure. I see one right here in the NDX, right here, right now, today, yesterday, this week. Um, in addition to what you've just shown, I shared in uh, the Tiger's Den um, the uh, NASDAQ 100 daily charts. Yeah. And two observations come from that. First, clearly rally phase. Second, clearly a weakening rally. In other words, we're making higher highs, but the momentum is waning. That, of course, sure. tells us nothing in particular other than don't be, don't be surprised by pullbacks. But that daily chart using Basil Chapman's excellent work has, uh, is in leg G higher on that daily chart. And I'm reminded of the trading tool that one of his students from a decade ago, Saratoga Bob, employed very successfully, I might add you. He was very, uh, uh, parenthetically, very helpful to me in teaching me his tool of the peak and trough G buy and sell signals that uh, yeah. uh, that he used and I've adopted over the years. Yes. But uh, we've got a leg G on the daily chart, and I showed in the Tiger's Den that daily chart, which shows a clear wedging pattern. And yes. I see my, my experience has been over the years one of two resolutions. One, an acceleration higher, or we just break out of that wedge. Or two, a topping and failure and reversal pattern. So I share that with you. And lastly, I'll just say uh, the NDX futures, the NQM3, are making new lows on the day here now in the past 10 minutes. Uh, all this tells me there's a candidate, or today, this week, uh, all this is a candidate for a short-term top in that NDX 100. Clearly, uh, there's no top proven. Uh, I'm very mindful of that. But I guess in the words I like to use, it's a candidate for one of those. Sure, sure. Excellent, excellent uh, synopsis. So we're looking at the NDX 100, the daily chart here. And as John pointed out, it is in wave number seven. That's letter G on my screen out here. Now, that won't be confirmed until we have a higher, a lower high. So that means Monday would be the confirmation of that. But we are in wave seven, so that says be aware. A bearish reversal candle today, John, would generate a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top in the NDX 100. Lastly, you probably noticed this as well. There is a S&P 500 wave number seven top that's already been been put in place out there and that was on the trading day it looks like of uh may the uh, may the first out there so if you don't have that noted go note that on your charts and thanks for calling john we're out of time uh thanks for the call we'll be right back thank you, you bet. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, folks. So let me get back to those charts here. So um, we were talking about wave number seven uh, patterns there with John. Where did I put that? Uh, right here. So here's the radio show industry. As I mentioned that the S&P 500 uh, also had formed a uh, wave number seven. So let me just get my cursor out here, give you the exact date. I believe it was May 1st. It was, uh, it was May 2nd. May 2nd, oh, it was May 1st, that, that uh, seventh wave uh, move. You can see here over on the trading day of uh, February 2nd, that also was a wave number seven. That was also a TD9 count. The two topping patterns uh, give more weight than one. Not that I've been able to uh, figure out, but unfortunately right now I can't really test that. Um, so in the case of the S&P 500, you're below the oscillator and change. Oh, you still got that consolidation pattern that's going on inside these markets. So you know, will the consolidation patterns get broken? Yeah, you know, that I don't know out there. So it's only the NDX and the uh, S&P that have those wave seven uh, tops that are in uh, place as we speak right now. So let's go to our next question, which was from, uh, we took care of JD, uh, is uh, Ron, want to take a look at wheat. So let's go take a look at the uh, wheat charts out here. We'll pull these up. So W, he wanted to look at WEAT. So that's what I'm going to pull up. Here's the daily time frame. And WEAT, if you were trading this ETF, you would want to know, or any ETF, quite frankly, you want to know what's inside it, or at least uh, what represents 50% or more of the holdings with inside it. Well, it turns out in the case of WEAT, it's got three of the future contracts. It's got the July, the September, and the December. So it makes it a little bit more complicated to trade. You're not just trading one futures contract. What each of these have here, Ron, are daily TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator bottoms. Again, two bottoms don't make it stronger than one. You have bullish structured profiles uh, in the uh, December contract. You've got a bearish structured profile in the July and the September contracts. Those say if you um, close above 650.70 for July, you should head to 695. Close above 674.90 for September, you should head to 706. Close above 675.95 for December, you should get to 721. So you've got beautiful daily setups here, but that's not the only thing you've got. You've got a beautiful weekly setup. And so the weekly setup shows TD9 count patterns that have been completed for both the July contract and the September of 2023, not the December of 2023. The real key area out here, Ron, that is of concern is the weekly oscillator and change line values. We haven't seen price close above that 
other than one week uh, for quite some time out there. So those really become the so-called fly in the financial ointment, so to speak. But in the case of the July wheat contract, so the current contract out here, we did have a three-bar knee-jerk, four-bar, I should say, knee-jerk reaction. Low, it appears. We got a little bit of a rally. So we should see at least a two- to four-bar rally to the upside inside of the wheat contract. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to WEAT. Uh, McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at AQST. So let's see if we can get back to where that chart might be. Is this it? It is. How about that? So in the case of AQST, uh, McGuppy, your question is buy, sell, or hold. Well, mm -hmm. yesterday you completed or you confirmed a TD9 count. Today is going to complete that. The answer to your question lies upon the oscillator and change line, which is green. So you got a top. Remember, when we get a top out here. Let's go back to Tommy's discussion about probability and poker and hands and so forth out here, because that's what we're doing here inside the stock market. So here we've got a topping pattern, the TD9 count. So you knew we had that yesterday. And uh, so therefore, and we know we get a confirmed topping pattern. Odds favor we're going to get a price pullback to that oscillator and change line. Now, because it's green, and the reason I developed the oscillator and change line was to be able to differentiate between a retracement and something more. A retracement, which is natural to pull back to test support, 213 at this stage of the game, you'd want to stay in the position. You might even want to add to the position. Of course, you'd like to see what's going on on an intraday basis or on a weekly basis. Well, the problem with AQST is this week is going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count. However, you know, you still need bar number nine which is likely to get next week. And the high can come on bars, as you know, nine or the bar following nine. So uh, can't draw conclusions, but the weekly's getting ready for some kind of a top. Now, the monthly looks good because you're above profile. Get a roads momentum indicator bottom uh, signal that is uh, present there. Uh, so I, the answer to your question as far as buy, sell, or hold is I wouldn't know until you get down to that 212 level. If you close below that, that's going to suggest a further retracement. The problem there is you don't have support until you get back to a buck 42, a buck 24, um, a buck 36. So that would be taking too much of a hit. So what you're going to need to do, McGuppy, or my suggestion is uh, dial down into the intraday charts out here. Here's an intraday chart that shows a roads mint indicator top. It's in bar number nine, but it's not a valid TD9 count unless we can spike below bar number six. So it needs to see a spike below 219 out there. Now, maybe it's doing it. I do have a bit of a delay with everything that is open out here on some of these uh, charts, but that's what you should be looking for out there. By the way, the next support level on a 30-minute uh, time frame chart is down at a buck 81 out there. So it's taking it's a, it's doing what it's supposed to do. The question is what you and I can't answer. And volume-wise, what is it doing? So in the first two hours of trading, you've done about 855,000. What was moving up here was 1.7 million, 1.4 million. So you've got pretty decent volume on that pullback out here. Got to watch that 212 level. So hope that helps you out, McGuppy. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. S1, uh, Formula One, wants to take a look at uh, VGZ. Well, that's not it. Let's see if we can get up to the VGZ charts out here. And uh, BGZ has a uh, roads momentum indicator top. It is trading back inside its profile. The next stop or the next support level uh, is 65 cents. And below that, it's 62 pennies. You're going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count as long as price closes today above 64 cents. You're at 66. If you don't, if you close below, if you close at 64 or below, this TD9 count goes away. But it looks like you might have an A to B equal CD pattern as well. I can't tell, but let's let's try to figure it out. Let's draw the A to B line out here. So here's A. Oh, that wasn't it. Let's try to get the right tool, Stevie. There we go. So there's A to basically B. Let me move this to the C. Well, I don't like that A to B equal CD pattern. That's for sure. So has it completed? No, nah, it hasn't completed. It really hasn't completed out there. So the day, the weekly chart shows us at 72 cents, that's resistance at the top of its profile. So you got kind of a consolidation, I'd say between 52 cents 
and 72 cents out there and expect uh, Vista Gold to uh, pull back 65 or 62 being those next target areas out there. So S1, I hope that, that provides you with the information you were looking for. Dano wanted to take a look at the U.S. dollar. Good question there, Dano. Let's put those charts up on our screen. Let's actually switch uh, panels out here. We'll see that the U.S. dollar index is breaking out above the daily profile. So that says that you and I want to go take a look at the weekly profile, Dano. So that's your upper left-hand chart that we have out here. And as we take a look at the weekly chart, we can see that there's resistance just ahead. 102.67 is that... Um, uh, is that uh, number. If price can close above 102.67, then we're looking at a move up to 104.00. And if price can close above that, then we're looking at 114.06. So you got to take this in in a, a, a progression. Somebody coughed at TFNN. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what mics are open up there. Sorry about that, guys. They should be listening in. Uh, do you have an open mic? I almost typed in M-I-K-E. So uh, um, in any event, uh, that's that, those are the levels to be watching for the U.S. dollar. Let me give them to you again. 102.67. You close above that, 104.04 um, would be the uh, mark. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We're going to take a look at Apple and uh, Microsoft and On and Gold to close out the uh, show. It's going to be a quickie, but we'll get it done. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look here at the Church for Apple. Uh, this is uh, Mike, our traveling Mike. He's in Florence uh, right now. Mike uh, and uh, John uh, Z and the Tigers, and his ears are probably going to percolate here. This is the weekly time frame chart. And the reason I've got it expanded is because bar number nine is going to complete today. So you're going to have a TD nine count top. Of course, that high can't come on the bar following bar number nine. But the reason I open up this chart, I always like to pay attention to say, OK, these TD nine counts, how often are they working in this specific instrument? And if we take a look at the recent past, the uh, bottom that formed out here on June the uh, 17th, that was a TD nine count bottom, took price right up to the resistance level 170, about where we're trading right now. It's breakdown area. We had a TD nine count top that took place on December 17th. That certainly led to that TD nine count bottom out there. Um, we do have a TD nine count pattern here that failed. That's the one that took place on August the 20th. So it's on a weekly basis. It is absolutely time to uh, pay attention. It's especially time to pay attention because Apple, uh, you know, has a, a Rhodes Mint indicator top. Now I'm seeing here. I said that it was a confirmed top. Yeah, it is a confirmed top still. So it's still got a confirmed Roachman to Mindicator top. But still, Apple's trading above the top of that daily profile, 170.92. You asked about Microsoft as well. If we take a look at the charts here for Microsoft, we're going to see it is going to confirm a TD9 count top today. Today, uh, on a weekly basis. And wave number seven, I think we talked about that. And then on the uh, daily time frame for Microsoft, you could get a, a confirmed Rosman to indicator top today with price getting back inside its profiles out there. So that's what we see going on in uh, Microsoft there. If we take a look at on semiconductor, we take a look at it. Um, everything here looks pretty good. You're above the oscillator and change line and profile levels on the daily time frame. This should go target 8476. That's even being communicated to us by the monthly time frame chart. Lastly, if we go take a look at Goldilocks for uh, Duke out here, if we take a look at gold, get up its eight panel charts, it should populate here momentarily. Here we go. So with regard to uh, gold, you are in wave number seven. You're going to get a confirmed wave number seven top on that weekly basis. So you kind of heard the show today. And you know what that says, Duke? That says time to be careful with regard to Goldilocks. And you've got a confirmed Rhodesman to Mindicator top on the daily time frame. So it does look like 1986 to 1996 is in the cards. Folks, have a fantastic and fabulous weekend. Thanks much for joining me and being here. And I'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. Be safe out there. Take care.